A revolution in genetic and other biological sciences research has greatly expanded the number of low-level research laboratories in the past 20 years. At the same time, workers in the biological industries have suffered from a broken system of oversight and health and safety regulations that have fallen well behind the times. These labs are handling biological materials that pose significant risk to health, safety, and the environment. While lower-level biolabs employ the largest number of researchers of any type of biolab in the U.S. and conduct research on the largest variety of organisms and pathogens, including genetically modified organisms, they employ the least stringent training programs of any kind of biolab. Working practices in these laboratories are not standardized, nor are they well documented. This fact is highlighted by the large numbers of infections documented in lower-level laboratories, a result of a toxic combination of inadequate health and safety standards, poor oversight, and lax compliance. As this research rapidly expands, a broader scrutiny of health and safety issues is necessary. Openly accessible and enforceable standards and practices in this area must be instituted to ensure necessary research doesn't impose unnecessary risks. How safe are these labs? According to the Boston Public Health Commission, no one knows precisely how many accidents occur at the lower containment levels. But what we do know is the following. There are 500,000 lab workers in the United States. One third of those have reported at least one infection. There have been 105 deaths traced to anthrax at a biological warfare facility. Between 1979 and 2004, there were 1,448 symptoms causing infections that resulted in 36 deaths. According to a New York Times investigation, this is a substantial underestimation. Tragic Consequences Dr. Jeanette Abu Bodhi. The British woman had spent six years in meningitis research labs. She was continuing that work in this ESI laboratory when she was struck down by the very disease she was working to combat. The woman's in a critical condition here at Wellington Hospital's intensive care unit. Dr. Jeanette Abu Bodhi contracted meningococcal infection while visiting a biolab in New Zealand. She lost both legs and an arm. Malcolm Casadaba. For one news. A University of Chicago researcher dies after being exposed to a strain of bacteria that causes plague. And tonight, Malcolm Casadaban's family wants answers. Tragic irony here is that Professor Malcolm Casadaban had been trying to develop a vaccine so that thousands of people around the world wouldn't die a painful, ugly death from a bacterial infection related to the plague. But it was that bacterium that appears to have killed him. Malcolm Casadaban died 12 hours after unknowingly being infected with a laboratory bacterium known as the plague. Richard Din. A researcher in San Francisco was reportedly killed by the very disease he was studying. KTVU has the story. Hospital officials say he was infected while working on a vaccine for a rare strain of bacteria that can cause a deadly bloodstream infection or meningitis. 25-year-old Richard Din worked in an infectious disease lab on a deadly strain of meningococcus. After he left work Friday night, he complained of headaches, a fever, and chills. Richard Din died just 17 hours after his symptoms started. He had been infected by the same strain of meningococcus as the one he worked with. Becky McLean. Somewhere between 2002 and 2003, while working at Pfizer Lab, she was exposed to a genetically engineered form of lentivirus. She suffered reoccurring paralysis and other illnesses. Exposed from a genetically engineered virus and uh, became very ill, and it, I got in a court battle trying to get exposure records for my health care, and I was declined. Basically, as trade secrets superseded my rights to get health care. And it's been a battle since 2003. And it continues to be a battle. I won uh, a lawsuit on a civil claim, but it's in appeals right now. And uh, the, the most horrid thing is the bio, biotech workers do not have any rights for safety, and they don't have rights to get exposure records for health care. And that is a concern for all people uh, in America, uh, because there's consequences to public health and safety. And uh... Becky McLean. A jury awarded her $1.37 million in damages in 2010. Pfizer has appealed. David Bell. In 1998, while a student at California State University, he went to work as a biolab researcher at AgriQuest, a venture biotech company. 
Five months into his job, he was asked to clean a barrel from a fermentation experiment with over a gallon of leftover materials. Soon after, he fell seriously ill. His immune system began to break down. He was unable to return to work. Really to be disgusting because when I took microbiology classes at uh, Sacramento State, you know, we were told cut and dry, this stuff is extremely dangerous. And we were told that, that in no way should we ever really be concerned about it because if something uh, unusual happened, like the instance that happened with me, that the doctors would call the CDC and the CDC would take over and they would culture it and they would find out what it was and actually eliminate it and, and save the worker's life. Uh, somehow my thing just kind of fell through the cracks and I, I literally damn near died from it. And this David Bell. After four surgeries, 30 different antibiotics, three antifungals, and two years of blood transfusions, David Bell is still ill. He found out later his entire lab was closed after he was sick. He has sued AgriQuest for poor working conditions. They are still in court. The current regulatory framework governing laboratory safety largely excludes biological hazards, especially novel, poorly studied, or genetically engineered biological agents that can infect humans. This poses a major threat not only to workers' safety, but to the communities housing research institutions and those individuals who come into contact with potentially infected workers outside the lab. We must move forward quickly with improved worker safety standards in this area. In the absence of any action, business as usual will continue to be the cruel and unusual punishment for innocent scientists, lab workers, and the communities they come in contact with.